Pro Football Hall of Famer and close friend of Deion Sanders, Terrell Owens, says that Colorado will be the next Alabama if Prime chooses to stay there long enough. Okay. So let's talk about this. This guy has a big statement. That's a big statement. So let's talk about it, okay? But before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I am your homeboy first. And this is the realest, most entertaining sports show in the game. Put it on some. Again, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share, share, share. Put all your people on it, okay? Let's talk about this real quick, y'all. First of all, I actually agree with T.O. I actually agree with T.O. I keep saying, I'm, and I quote this, I don't know who came up with this, but it is absolutely right. They say that recruiting is the lifeblood of college football. And they can say that about pretty much all collegiate sports. It's recruit. Somebody else once said, it ain't the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. Got a lot of truth to it, okay? At the end of the day, when you when you face off against somebody that got some good Jimmy's and Joe's themselves, now them X's and O's got to come into play, okay? But having them Jimmy's and Joe's can win your ass a lot of ball games, okay? And that's what I think Alabama, during its run under Nick Saban, was able to do. Nick Saban was able to uh, uh, activate that sleeping giant of a, 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 a dormant superpower, which is Alabama, okay? Get them boosters to start writing them checks and, and, and uh, uh, buying them cars and paying for mama's uh, 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 rent and, and mortgages and all that shit they were doing. This pre-NIL. This pre-NIL. Nick Saban was able to get that shit rolling. Okay? And that's why he was so successful. Yes, Nick Saban knows football. Yes, Nick Saban uh, you know, make sure that his teams were disciplined and you know, uh, they're going to limit turnovers. They're going to force turnovers. They're going to run the ball, okay? But he had great fucking players. They had great fucking players. All right? We see, like, Nick Saban didn't just stick with that goddamn NFL shit. He came on back down. Came on back down. Why? Because in the NFL, see, it ain't just you got this certain number of scholarships and you had a program that's so – big and bad and you got the boosters and you can just go have your pick of the litter and get all these motherfuckers that you want. NFL draft ain't like that. The NFL free agency ain't like that. So she you gotta really your scouting department gotta be on that shit and you really you really gotta end up coaching. You gotta coach for real for real okay but in college football if your ass can win the recruiting trail, you're going to win a lot of games. And of course, Deion Sanders can win the recruiting trail. We've seen that. We saw at Jack State University. He killed it at recruiting. Okay. We've seen at Colorado. He's been able to do it just in that one little class of transfers. Able to bring guys in. Had no doubt in my mind that he uh, can be magnetic for recruits. So I agree with T.O. Uh, with T.O.'s assessment from that standpoint. This is where, where I still have some questions, though. One, the boosters. Notice what I said. Nick Saban was able to get those boosters to open up the checkbook and start doing all that shit that that, that under the table shit pre nil that they need to do to get them boys in there. Okay, 
and news flash the boosters do not look like me the boosters do not look like Deion sanders okay so prime prime when he was at jack state he claims he didn't go uh to none of the meetings and talk to boosters and shit like that. this we say on club say that motherfucking say a lot of shit now uh basically acting like you know jack state boosters were not cheerful givers and they they didn't have enough money to give. I ain't going for that little money. But go look at the club say say shit they said. Okay. Again, disregarding the legacy of huh, slavery and discrimination and the racial wealth gap. But that's a whole nother video. I ain't on that right now. But Colorado's boosters, he gonna have to go to them meetings. He gonna have to go to them meetings. And see, I don't know. The, the the does Colorado have the level of boosters, the guys with deep pockets? I'm sure they got some folk with deep pockets, but do they have the motherfuckers with the pockets to keep up with Alabama's boosters, Georgia's boosters, uh Ohio State's boosters, Michigan's boosters? Okay. Like, like you you gotta. Gotta write some checks now. Gotta write some checks. You had to write some checks to go ahead to get prime. You didn't have the money at first, but you're confident you're gonna get a coup. You had to write some checks to get prime. You did that. You gotta write some checks to retain prime. But then you're gonna have to write some checks, checks to get the level of motherfucker to be able to compete for a national championship. Not a conference championship. So Alabama wasn't just winning the SEC. The motherfuckers were winning uh, uh, the Natty. Okay? I don't know. I don't know if Colorado has that. Maybe they do. They won the national championship in the past, okay? Uh, in the early 90s. I was a boy, okay? They won. But I question whether they got what's necessary when it comes from the booster standpoint because it took 30 years. To get the shit right. Or, or to get it going in the right direction, like where you're going, going back to prominence. So that makes me wonder, okay, where your boosters have been at this whole time? Where they checkbooks been at this whole time? They they, they didn't want to pay players? They were waiting on NIL to try to pay the boys? Because all these successful programs, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, uh, all the, uh, Miami doing this run, okay, Florida State, LSU, you name it. They were paying these boys. USC. Give Reggie Bush his highs and back hell. Y'all yeah, knew what y'all was doing. NCAA knew what was going on too. So Colorado, what the hell were their boosters doing that whole damn time? Okay. I don't know. Maybe Prime has galvanized them and they say, see now, okay. We've been sitting on this money. We got a man who uh, uh, the kids won't. We just got to goddamn write the check. And then, boom, off we go. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. Here's the next thing. And this is the biggest thing. This is the biggest thing right here. Okay. Because I do think Prime, if the folks got the money and they're willing to spend it, I think Prime can talk them into doing it. Prime is non-controversial when it comes to real shit that matters. So if, uh, if a lot of those boosters are like Trump supporters and shit like that, they ain't going to bother Prime because, as he said, he don't do politics. He does people. So, he, you know, he might walk around with the hoodie on and the shades and all that kind of shit, but he ain't finna be on no – he not finna do that, okay? So he, he he's used to dealing with the Jerry Joneses of the world type of cast, okay? But here's the thing. These other schools got their versions of Jerry Jones, too. These other schools got some, some, some boosters with deep pockets and political connections who are willing to do some slimy shit. Okay? And with Prime, yeah, he might not be on that. He ain't on that shit. Clearly, he ain't on that. But he still does not have the complexion for the connection for the protection. 
So you still got to wonder, would this system, this college football system that, that still to a lot of motherfuckers, especially in MAGA world, like this is their uh, bastion here. Okay, I encountered a brother one time that told me uh, 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 he didn't watch the NFL no more. He just watched college football. I knew what that meant. I knew what the shit meant. Without him having to tell me, I knew what that shit meant. Because you saw so many motherfuckers online saying it. After Colin Kaepernick started taking a knee and you had that whole uh, 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 controversy surrounding that, and then after George Floyd was murdered, and then you saw the, the league kind of let guys you know, be more expressive with stuff, and they start putting in racism on the helmet decal, and they putting uh, in racism in the end zone, and it takes all of us and all that kind of shit. Oh, that that pissed off a lot of folks in MAGA world, and it made them say, "Fuck the NFL." I only watch college football. Why? Because college football was still traditional. Yeah, everybody's still running out of the tunnel with the flag and everything like that. Uh, uh you still got. Uh, you got all these programs. We got like what 13, 14 black head coach, you know what I'm talking about? And other than Prime, all the other head coaches, they keep it very corporate. None of them, you know, just on no controversial shit, to my knowledge. To my knowledge, I haven't I haven't seen any of the other black head coaches on no controversial shit in terms of racial uh social justice. Okay, now I know Mel Tucker. He's involved in some controversial shit right now, and that's why he got the boot. Okay. But in terms of some uh uh you know, Black Lives Matter shit or something like that. Ain't none of them on that. But it's only Prime who's sitting up here on some hip hop head coach type shit. Okay. So I wonder. Will the movers and shakers from these other schools would they will they sit there and let the hip hop head coach come through this thing and just take this bitch over without them trying some dirty shit, some slick shit, trying to uh uh get get Colorado on a recruiting violation? Okay, you know I don't know what that might look like now. Cause you know again with this NIL. All these schools finding a way to pay these boys with a wink, wink. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, Keyshawn Johnson be on undisputed talking about USC's collective. Uh, USC doesn't pay players, you know, what it's our collective. Come on, man, get the fuck out of here. We know what's going on, we know what's going on now, okay? We know what's going on. Uh, but I wonder, okay, because again, you can't let big sports media fool you, they love Prime because they know him and they want access to him because he makes them money, okay. But it's a bunch of other shit. I bet you conservative uh, radio I ain't saying uh, fun things about that motherfucker. Okay. I don't listen to it, but I can bet. I bet you conservative social media I ain't saying no fun things about this man. And again, he don't come out. He ain't no social justice warrior. If he was, he would have stayed at Jack State. Okay. But that, you know, he, he's not on that. Okay. But still, the fact that he uh, refuses to conform or assimilate to the style of dress that they deem correct or the, 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 the type of vernacular that they deem correct, the fact that he brings in these uh, uh, rappers and, 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 you know, just people from the hip hop world and stuff like that to be a part of the program, there's a lot of these folks that don't like that shit. And they don't want to see that man win no national championship. They don't want to see that. And so, with this being, okay, if you say NFL, I told you they pissed at that because of Colin Kaepernick. Uh, then you look at NBA, you know they don't fuck with the NBA. And they damn sure don't fuck with the WNBA. Okay. Because of all the social justice shit and having the folks' name on the back of the jersey and, and uh, LeBron back in the gap saying uh, we can't wearing that we can't uh, I can't breathe T-shirt and you know calling Trump a bum you know what I'm talking about what uh, in the WNBA what they do for social justice and when they what they talk about with uh, women's rights and 
and uh, uh, gay rights and all that kind of shit. You know, they, they don't fuck with it. Like, college football is like their, their baby. There's a lot of motherfuckers out here that don't want to see this dance and prance and N-word in their mind. Go get a national championship. They might even be entertained by, you know, Colorado uh, uh, bubbling right now. Like, oh, it makes a good story. But they were elated when they saw Oregon do what they did. So I wonder. I wonder. If they won't try some funny business with Prime. Now, if they do, will Colorado or is the Colorado program from the president and the AD and the boosters, are they powerful enough? Are they well connected enough to protect Deion Sanders if this type of shit goes on? I've said this before. When he was at Jack State, I was saying, uh, if uh, he you know, stayed and we had that black renaissance and shit and he kept getting Travis Hunter type of guys to come to this HBCU. I was worried about, goddamn, what these motherfuckers going to do. Because I know we don't have the connections and we don't have the money to fight back like that. Maybe Colorado does. Maybe they do. I hope that does not happen. I would hope that the man is able to just do what Nick Saban uh, uh, does do what Kirby Smart Smart does do what uh, 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 Jimbo Fisher was able to do when he was at Florida State. Do what all the other motherfuckers do. Convince the best boys to come to your school, pay them legally or illegally. Go with them. We shall see. That's what it's gonna take, though. And if that happens, maybe, maybe Colorado could be the next Alabama. But we shall see. Put it on some. Please subscribe to my daddy's YouTube channel because the more subscribers he gets, the more attractive he looks to sponsors. The more attractive he looks to sponsors, the more money he can make. And the more money he can make, the more money he can spend on me.